Hello, I'm Mr. Parchment. You're watching Talawa TV with Crystal Davis. Golden Ricketts, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? I am well. You've made my night. Before we get started, please go ahead and big up the greatest parish in Jamaica. <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. So um, I'm going to big up St. Thomas because I was born there. Yes. And I'm also going to big up St. Andrew because I grew up there. I love that. I'll take that. 14.94, game's record. Um, you weren't playing about tonight, were you? No, I definitely knew that the girls were coming out here to fight, so I had to bring my A-game and war them. What got you going? Was it the cold or was it something else? It's the cold. I like competing in the cold for some strange reason, but then after the first jump, it, I feel like it got even colder and then the breeze started changing, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what next? What's next for you in terms of achievement? Because this is your greatest career medal, isn't it? Yes. Um, apart from the World Championships, yes, this is my first um, gold. gold. So um, what's next? I have the Monaco Diamond League next week, and I'm also going to be participating at the NACAC Championships in Bahamas. Amazing stuff. And how does it feel to inspire the little kids in St. Thomas? Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of them with their eyes gripped to the screen saying, I want to be like Golden Ricketts. Yes, definitely. I hope to be an inspiration to them. I hope they see themselves in me. If them foot long, them can try to try the triple jump. You know, if them slim, them can try the triple jump or even high jump. What if them have short foot? If them have short foot, then can try to cast about with foot short too. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. My Talawas, good afternoon, good evening, possibly good morning, all depends on where you're based in the world. Before I forget my manners, people, happy Sunday. Um, utilize that comment section um, if you can. Actually, not if you can. Please do go ahead and utilize that comment section. It's there for a reason. Also, um, go ahead and hit like on the button, this current video, so that you guys don't forget it uh, later on in the show. Let me just get those few main requests really I won't really be requesting much from you guys today so I'm being pretty fair on you utilize the comment section and also um hit the like button nice and easy also whilst you're at it let me know how your weekend's been let me know how your teams have performed as well how you're looking in top flight of um men's football there in england um drop your little comments let me know how your team performed the headline reads for itself and if you don't want to read it i'll go ahead and read it for you it says reggae girls weekend of action review so this is actually the first one first reggae girls weekend of action review in uh, um it feels a little bit closer to two weeks um because it has been a while since I've sat here and given you guys a uh, update on the reggae girls. Obviously, we just came back from the October International Women's Football break. Wasn't really much of a break for us, though, because we didn't have any games. So there was no games there for the reggae girls, the senior reggae girls, that is. A little bit concerning, considering they should be preparing themselves for the World Cup. And if you're a little bit out the loop and you aren't aware, let me give you a friendly reminder there that the Reggae Girls have qualified for back-to-back -back World Cups on the bounce. So you can and you should expect to be cheering on your team come next year when they go down under um, for the 2023 Women's World Cup taking place in Australia and New Zealand. And the all-important, where will we be playing who will we be playing? We're about to find that out, guys. In about five days' time, come Saturday, we should find out. Matter of fact, we will find out who we'll be playing against. Let me know how you guys, or I should say, let me know who you guys um, fancy taking on. I know who I want. Um, definitely know who I want. And whilst we're at it, um, again, um, the date there for you guys to etch in the back of your minds is October the 22nd for the World Cup draw and it would be rude of me not to wish Haiti good luck they are through to the intercontinental playoffs now that's taking place um in February of next year so it's between the 11th and the 23rd of February 2023 and hopefully um they can clinch one of the final remaining spots there and 
hopefully will be seeing Haiti at the World Cup. They have some energetic fans. I, I like them. I like the, the the Haitian football fans. And when we played in that World Cup decider, the World Cup qualifying decider, I should say, um, in the CONCACAF Women's Championship, they made that viewing so special. Kind of felt like we were in the stadium because they were really... Um, piping up they were full of energy and a lot of them were convinced that they would beat us all they needed really for that uh, decisive game there was a draw and thankfully by the grace of god they didn't get nowhere near that so now that the job has been done on our end best of luck to haiti i guess what i should do guys is give you guys a little um sniff of the groups and look at how look what pop wearing i should say not the groups my apologies uh give you guys a little look at the groups there um at the pots and we can see how where the other countries are placed um so let me go ahead and bring that up on screen it's looking a little bit different uh, i haven't done a live stream in about how many days now Maybe four or five days and my my um studio is looking a little bit different here, guys. Um, why does it look like that? All right, let's see if we can figure something out. It's not looking how it should look, um, but I think we should be all right, guys. Um, let's see if I can bring up a little tab there for you guys and we can just familiarize ourselves with the pots. You guys are a little bit quiet. You know, I don't like when you're quiet. So again, do drop something there in the comment section. I should think you guys are able to comment. Let me go ahead and double check. Maybe you can't. Is this, is it on? Okay, maybe it's me that's done something wrong. All right, let's go ahead and correct that because I don't think you guys can, Um, let me do something my end. I feel like, okay, I knew I did something wrong. I locked you guys out and I'm wondering why aren't they um, coming in? All right, so let's, bear with me guys. Let me change something, uh, my end. I don't know why it was saying that, but I freed it up for you now. I was wondering why they're so quiet. It was because of me, nothing to do with you guys. So the comment section is open now. Um, sorry about that. I, um, yeah, I had it on the wrong permission. So the permission was for like, basically, child friendly um something of that sort so yeah you guys can go ahead and utilize the comment section my apologies uh, what did i have it on let me just go back and see what i had it on oh the audience was set for um the video saying that it's made for kids obviously it's still child friendly so um if you're in the room with your child don't worry you're safe you're in good hands and the pots you're looking at the pots guys only pot that is relevant to you right now um, as things stands as it relates to the reggae girls I'm pretty sure you can see the Jamaican flags there at the bottom of pot number three so we can go through the other pots there with you guys um in pot one you have the host and that is host of AS uh, New Zealand and Australia are placed in pot one Current Iranian World Cup champions, the USA, can they make it three times in a row? They did do it 2015, 2019. Can they do it 2023? Let me know in the comment section is history on the horizon there for the United States. Current Iranian World Cup champions. Sweden's also in part one. And the current queens of Europe, England, Germany, France and Spain complete pot one. In pot two, you have the current Olympic gold medalists, Canada, Netherlands, Brazil, Japan, Norway, Italy, China, PR, Korea Republic. Pot three, that's the pot that you should really and truly be focusing on. Um, and at the bottom there of pot one, as I've already reiterated, and let me say again that we are in pot three. And the other teams that make up pot three, I'll read it from the top for you, is Denmark, Switzerland, Republic of Ireland. It's a little bit fine on my screen there. I could barely make out their, um, their, uh, the name of their country, Colombia. Argentina, Vietnam, and Costa Rica. Pot four, this one is incomplete for the time being. A um, couple additional countries there to join pot four. 
but you should still potentially know who those countries are likely to be um, when we get to the playoff stages and so on. But still do keep your eye out for pot four for the World Cup draw come Saturday. And in pot four, you have Nigeria, Philippines, South Africa, Morocco, our friends, Morocco and Zambia. Uh, so let me know in the comment section who you guys want to take on in the World Cup draw. Who do you guys fancy for the World Cup? I already have my team. And I think it's probably a little bit obvious who I want Jamaica to um, face off against. But I'm curious to know who you guys um, want to take on. Um, so go ahead and utilize that comment section now that I've opened it up for you all. And let me know who you guys want in your World Cup draw. Mr. Campbell, good evening, sir. How are you? How are you doing? How are you doing? How's things? How's things going with you? How's your Sunday? How was your Sunday? You can never underestimate um Brazil as well. Where's Brazil? Brazil placed in pot two. They're champions in their own rights as well. Um, Copa America champions. You can never ever write off the Brazilians. I am well. I can't complain. I'm well. Back again with another Reggae Girls Weekend of Action Review. It's been a while um, thanks to the international break. And these breaks are, they're, they're quite close together, aren't they? I don't know what you guys make of the women's international breaks. But as you blink, you've got um, two more games coming up for um, where women's football is concerned. So November, we have another women's international break. I've already given you guys the information on that. Um, two games there to be played on home soil. So if you missed that video, I can probably find a link and drop it in the comment section so that you guys can be um, updated on who we'll be playing against. And when I say who, um, it's quite obvious that I'm referring to the reggae girls. And that is the senior team, for those of you who are wondering. So I did this video, maybe, when did I speak about the pending friendlies? The 4th of October. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the link for that game, for that uh, live stream. And you guys can go ahead and watch it when you can. Plenty of um, discussion in that one as well. And just in case you're unaware, we are scheduled to play against um, Paraguay. So let me go ahead and drop that link there for you. And that is for the November fixture because, hello, we didn't get a fixture in October. Um, politics on display as per usual. Um, New Zealand put A. Yeah, New Zealand and um, Australia, um, the two co-hosts there, they're in part one. Um We've got the reigning World Cup champions, USA, and the current European champions, England, in their um, pot as well. And like I said, you can never, ever write off the likes of Brazil. Brazil um, champions, um, Copa America champions, they're there in pot two with the Olympic gold medalist, Canada. Um, so yeah, let me know who you guys are um, fancy for these World Cup draws. Again, it is scheduled to take place on Saturday and we can dissect that if and when it happens. Um, hopefully there won't be no delay. Um, but when the draw is made, then obviously we can have a conversation around that as well. And hopefully you guys will be there in the comment section um, being quite active. Um, all right, so let's get up the... Headline again for tonight, sure. I'm going to try and see if I can whisk through this one because I've got an early start tomorrow, guys. So I'm going to try and breeze through this one with you. Apologies um, if anyone drop any comments in the comment section. I will give you my attention before I sign off on the show. Hopefully you guys can hear me. My microphone is on orange at the moment. It should be on green. 
it's just changed to green. So if my audio drops at any point, then let me know and I'll do some tweaks on my end. If you're just tuning in, happy Sunday. How are you doing? Let me know how you're doing. Pot two. You seem to, Mr. Campbell, you seem to be concerned about every single pot except the famous pot three. Um, if you cast your eyes to the bottom of pot three, you see the black, gold, and green of Jamaica. Um, but yes, pot two, you're referring to pot two. Yes, Japan is in pot two. Is that who you want? Are you giving me the countries? Okay, I get you now. My apologies. Okay, I, I'm a little bit slow today, aren't I? So you're saying that you want New Zealand and Japan. All right. So who do you want from pot four? Okay, okay. <laughs> Dodging the heavyweights. Tactical. Okay. Um, good day, Mr. Reed. How are you? How you doing? My bro, how are you? Good day. How are you? What's on the dinner menu? Actually, don't answer that because you've already told me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed your dinner with your little one. I know you're in good spirit because your team um, got an all-important victory today. So I know you're in good spirits. Any team from pot four. So shall we say Nigeria? You fancy now? I mean, Morocco, a couple of Moroccan girls there that reckon they can beat us. So just to um, show them that they're wrong, even though we already know the answer to that, wouldn't mind taking on Morocco. Um, so Ian Campbell has gone with New Zealand. Japan, possibly uh, Nigeria or Morocco, although he has said that he don't mind anyone from pot four. Um, so let me know who you guys want for the World Cup draw. Um, before I was a little bit confused there, Mr. Campbell. My apologies. I thought you was just naming random teams. Duh. Obviously, I asked you to tell me who you want. Um, yeah, um, a little bit tired. Bear with me. Miss Brown, good day. How are you? Happy Sunday. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get up that headline again there for you. Um, for those of you who are wondering what tonight's live stream is all about, the headline reads for itself. I think I've been more than fair with hanging on for the usual guys to show up in the um, comment section. Almost 20 minutes. I'm deliberately um, delaying myself just because I know that some of you are notified midway through my live stream. YouTube is messing me around, it seems. So trying to delay the live stream as best as I can. Um, but I'll probably give you guys the regulars, that is, maybe an additional three minutes um, before I get into the weekend of action update. And um, whilst I'm at it, thank you guys again for tuning into the live stream. Those of you there in the comment section and to those of you who are silently watching, thank you for giving me your time. And we are going to be talking about the Rugger Girls weekend of action, a landmark goal for Atlanta Premise. Bunny and Hale, so that is Khadija Banishar and Shania Hale's dished out four goals apiece. Keen and Slavia Prague showed their derby determination with a stunning draw and loads more to discuss in the Weekend of Action review. Again, I am going to try and whiz through this one because I have an early start tomorrow. So Sunday shows are not going to be as long as they usually are, guys, unless something change with me work-wise. Sunday shows, we're going to have to speed it up a bit. I usually give you guys my Sunday shows at like 1 a.m. my time. But I have been briefing you guys I have been preparing you guys for this moment to tell you to let you guys know that don't look out for me for um 1 a.m on Sunday no more because I'll be in my bed getting myself ready for work and my brothers and say good day Mr. Marcus McGarvey how are you Mr. Garvey how are you Mr. Marcus Garvey how are you And I don't like the fact that you show up without the gang. I'm always seeing Mr. Marcus Messiah Garvey in the comment section, but he's never showing up with the gang. It's just he's always coming by himself, people. Don't ask me why. I have asked him to bring the gang, Nanny and the rest of the gang with him, but he never does. It's just always him, but I'm grateful for his presence, the great man himself, Mr. Marcus Messiah Garvey. We need Taylor Hines, but I think she wants to play. You and me both, Mr. Campbell. You and me both. We got max, maximum respect. 
all right guys so i think we've held on for long enough and uh, again in case you're wondering what's in front of you on the screen that's the pots those are the pots um for the world cup draw and that world cup draw will be taking place in five days time on saturday and like i said once the draw is made we'll no doubt um dissect what's in front of us dissect the teams our opponents and also look at where where uh where we'll be playing because that's important isn't it knowing where we, where we'll be playing and also who we'll be playing against all right so let's just go ahead and dive right into this i'm gonna do the usual start things off in england because why not um it's my location so it makes perfect sense it's not favoritism it's just because it's my location so it makes sense to me to start off in england if you guys want me to switch things up um for the next live stream and start off well, start off with another league first rather than always starting off with England and let me know don't want to seem like there's any favoritism there because there 110 percent are no favoritism going on so what we're going to do is I guess we can start off in the WSL we can look at the table there in the WSL so let's go ahead and switch um tabs temporarily and hopefully that one's work has it worked for you guys yes it has worked so i can go back um gonna leave you guys in the comment section briefly i will be back so if you drop a comment and i don't respond it's because i can't see the comments as things stand right so i'll be back in a short while table doesn't lie does it you have the red devils and that is manchester united sitting at the top of the table there Few unbeaten sides in the league. Three matches played in the top flight of women's football in England. Only two unbeaten sides still stand. And that is Manchester United, the current leaders there of the group. And they are out in front. Um, based off their goal difference there, you can see they have a goal difference of 10. Arsenal have a goal difference of 9. Maximum points of peace. Three matches played three wins in the bag for those two teams there that's leading the top of the table but with the greatest of respect to both Manchester United and Arsenal um, they are irrelevant to us as things stand until they recruit um, a reggae girl here or there one or two uh, or plentiful whatever it may be but for the time being they are not really relevant to us with the greatest of respect to them the only teams that's re relevant to us as it relates to um reggae girls and when i say reggae girls i'm talking about the players that actually play for us as things stands not potential reggae girls because if they're if we're looking at potential reggae girls then there's more than two teams there to look at so um the first team that we could cast our eyes on is the team sitting in seventh place and you should be able to make them out there and if you can't see if i can go ahead and click on them and it works um thankfully sometimes google don't allow me to click on the team sometimes they play me about i really like like that and what we can do is go ahead and look at the lineup because you guys can already um see the full-time results right i'm gonna get back into the full-time results shortly now what you're wondering where is rebecca spencer well you can see her there um sat on the bench and the other bit of information that you're you must i'm assuming you're seeking is drew spence and you can see her there dotting the number 24 in case you're a little bit behind on your reggae girls update yes you are looking at drew spence um playing for tottenham previously she gave 10 years of stellar service to chelsea and um she brought an end to her chelsea career during the summer um after over a decade of service moving on to the white half of north london and that is where she's resigning with her compatriot rebecca spencer so if i scroll up you can see this one for yourself again we're looking at top flight of women's football in england that's the wsl or fa women's super league um, whichever way you want to which whichever how you want to um refer to them so this one is a pretty much a um, simple read. Drew Spence, Rebecca Spencer and Tottenham defeated Liverpool. And that is the newly promoted Liverpool there. Um, they are the um, champions of last season's 
Championship. So that's the second tier of women's football in England. Um, made their way back to the big time in top flight of women's football in England. Um, and they did that in stellar fashion last season as well. Um, we had a reggae girl who played for them. Um, and she moved on no longer plays for them um, be interesting to see if we could potentially have another reggae girl um so as i was saying um drew spence rebecca spencer and tottenham defeated liverpool one nil and here's where we're gonna do a little bit of a backtrack guys to keep you guys all in the loop if we look at the table um actually not the table let's backtrack i'm going a little bit too fast here let's click on tottenham again you can see there um with the number of games played remember i said three games played right some teams have played four games majority have played three so if we go back um and click on tottenham you can see there that that is their first home win of the season so far Right, played a couple of games. Remember, one, two, three, three games into the season. Started things off away from home. Also, um, unfortunately for them, lost their North London derby at the Emirates, and that was a spectacular game in terms of the number of tickets that were sold. Record-breaking numbers at the Emirates, um, stadium back in September, twenty-fourth of September. And now um, they have turned things around. They've also bounced back um, from how they started off, um, how they continued their um, start to the season, I should say. Started off with a positive result. We had Drew Spence on the score sheet there in the opening day against the Foxes. As I said, unfortunately, fell to a 4 0 defeat over their biggest rivals there, Arsenal, but they bounced back. Um, just before the international break. And now um, they have gone one step better, clinching their first points um, on home soil. This one was played at home. I was supposed to cover this game and I wasn't able to do so, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate because obviously it would have been great to um, watch the reggae girls live and direct. So I wasn't able to cover that one. Um, but hopefully, hopefully I can find myself at more of these games during the season. It is a long season. It's only three matches played. So I've got some time to um, make up for missing out on a few of these games. And I actually learned, um, I think it was last week, I learned that they, Tottenham women, they play at, um, click on them again so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Brisbane Road, guys, and this is one of the closest stadiums to me. So remember I told you guys that one of my closest stadiums is the London Stadium, which is the home of West Ham United. And it just so happens that um, the, the the two reggae girls there, Rebecca Spencer and um, Drew Spence, uh, they play their home game there at Brisbane Road. And you should be familiar with Brisbane Road um, if you're following a particular club there um, late in Orient and they happen to be another close club to my um, to where I live so that makes it even easier I've got a couple of clubs that's within the, mm, maybe walking distance could walk it if I'm <laughs> If I'm hell-bent and trying to stay fit, could definitely um, walk to a couple stadiums. Um, like I said, West Ham, both male and female, their teams are literally on my doorstep, quite close to my location. Right. So let's see what you guys, take a quick little break there, see what you guys are saying in the comment section. Man City women's team. Mr. Hot Chili Pepper, you're, I'm surprised you're showing your face there. Um, don't think I've forgotten about what happened today. Definitely don't think I've forgotten about what happened today. I don't know. Do I need to bring it up? Do I need to give you a, a gentle reminder? Do you need a friendly reminder? Or should I just um, stop whilst I'm at it? What I'm going to do is I'm not going to focus on your men's team. Instead, I'm going to um, lighten the mood a bit for you. And we're going to focus on the women's team. And if you don't know by now, I'm not really sure why that is. 
um, because you should know, particularly if you've been following the platform, that Manchester City is the home of Khadija Banishaw. And this ma um, makes for a fantastic reading. Couldn't really get with this. I mean, this season is completely different for a number of reasons. We're now seeing Bunny as a regular in the starting 11. And I don't think that's going to change. And we already know you start her, you give her um, fairness, equality, equity. She's going to deliver and she did exactly that. It's a sweet um, reading of the scoreline there. I double from um, Khadija. Bunny Shaw inspired Manchester City to their first points of the WSL season of a 4-0 victory over the Foxes. And if we go back and look at how Manchester City uh, are positioned, there you go, guys. Three matches played, two losses on the board, um, one win. So they've picked up their first points there of the league campaign. That is, I um, don't want to confuse you guys. If I do a little bit of a backtracking, I probably don't want to see this if you support um, Manchester City, but um, I guess it makes sense to just look at how they've started their season. Again, only three matches in. This was a bit of a surprise result, wasn't it, on the opening day of the season there, um, losing 4-3 against Aston Villa away from home. Um, the Manchester the uh, Manchester City versus Chelsea game, probably somewhat of a expected scoreline going up against the current champions of the WSL. Bit of a shaky start to the season for Manchester City and Bunny, quite similar to how they started off last season's campaign, but hopefully we'll be seeing more of the same. Um, the all-important win to kickstart their season and long may it continue. Also great for them to get a clean sheet as well. So let me see what you guys are saying. Jordan Hyman, um, good day. Don't think I've seen you on my channel. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> I'm definitely going to leave it alone. Um, then again, I don't know if I should because someone was winding me up the other day when my team was set to play against. Was it Liverpool? Yeah, it was a Liverpool. Someone was telling me that my team will be losing to Liverpool. Not going to call no name, but look at what happened today, eh? Got to be careful what you wish for on people. All right, guys. So we've discussed Manchester City and we've also touched on Tottenham as well. Two clubs there in the top flight of women's football in England where our reggae girls are currently calling their home. And that is Tottenham, Drew Spence and Rebecca Spencer. And for Manchester City, it's Khadija Bunny Shaw. So that's a first home win in the bag for Rebecca Spencer and Drew Spence. I think I can hear rain, guys. Sorry, that kind of distracted me a little bit. Um, and Manchester City and Khadija Banishaw picked up their first points of the season. Started things off a little bit rocky, but they're bringing themselves together and long may it continue. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it's raining, um, which is good because I like to fall asleep with the rain, um, but not so good because I think I left my umbrella at work and I have an early start tomorrow, so we'll see how this one pans out. Oh, was it? Okay, my apologies. I apologize, but you know what? You know how you see what happened? Oh, you wish bad on my team and then now look what happened to you. So this is why it pays. You just be on my side next time and maybe you'll get a draw when you go up against the, the big boys, the big six. Um, okay, so what we can do is we can go and look at the championship. If I could just collect my um, URL there and we can go and look at the second tier of women's football in England. And I must say the table is looking quite good. Should we just have a little 
quick glance at the table, guys. Um, the table is looking delightful if you support um the reggae girls, that is. Sitting firmly at the top is Shania Hills and Bristol City, followed closely by Atlanta Premise and London City. Crystal Palace, that is where Paige Bailey Gale um, currently calls her home. They're sat in fourth place. And Birmingham City is the home of Siobhan Wilson. So we're looking decent there in the championship. Safe to say that. Listen, we must be coming up today to top flight of women's football. Must, must. They, we're, we're spoiled for choices. Currently, first, second, fourth, and six and I am um, Birmingham City will be climbing up that table as will Crystal Palace so I think we're going to be occupying the um the top five positions there in the league so yeah more reggae girls um expected to come up to top flight of women's football in England currently um there's more than a handful of us um in the second tier of women's football so let me go back to that um table Right, and we can start things off. I've already given you guys some info on a brace. We've got another brace coming up. And if you were tuned in when I first started the live stream, then you already know who got a brace in the championship. That's the Barclays Women's Championship. The Bar Barclays are the um this season sponsor, new sponsors there for the second tier of women's football in England. Um, so more good news in the championship there. And I guess because it is a special occasion for her, let's start off with London City. And that's London City Lionesses. If I can get up today's result, where is it? Okay, it's right in front of me. <laughs> Oh, this makes for a beautiful reading, doesn't it? Um, the player there that you guys should be keeping your eyes on. Um, probably can't make this one out on your screen, so I'll read it for you. Atlanta premise there um, inside the ninth minute. And you should be able to read the scoreline. If you don't want to read it, I'll go ahead and read it for you. Better yet, let's go ahead and bring up that um, starting 11 Let's see if I can identify Atlanta there for you guys. Let's see. There she is there, guys, um, donning the number 20 jersey. If any one of you are keen on wanting a London City Lionesses jersey, go for the number 20 um, with uh, Atlanta Primus on the back. All right. Um, so this is how this one panned out there. Um, special um, occasion there for Atlanta Primus. Um, Primus capped off. 50 appearances for London City with a goal as the Lionesses, as you can see right there in front of you, hammered Coventry United 5-0 in the Barclays Women's Championship. And I must say, I am loving the scoreline. Definitely loving the scoreline. You already know any, any club that holds a reggae girl, we already want them to win, even if it means... The reggae girls are playing against the clubs that we grew up supporting. So, yes, even when the reggae girls are playing against Arsenal, it's such a weird position to be in because I'm like, I want my club to win. But I also want the reggae girls to score in that in that case. I would want Drew Spence to score. But then I'm like, I also want <laughs> I also want Rebecca to keep a clean sheet. I can't have it all, basically. But wish them the very best of luck. And it is always um country over club all the time country over club when the reggae girls are involved there ain't no reggae girls involved it is unfortunately i'm gonna say it is going to be um whisper it quietly club over country when there is no reggae girls involved um i've already given the reading there for top flight of women's football so the WSL so just to reiterate I see someone's asking about Bunny she had a double um Bunny netted a double um to inspire Manchester City to their first points of the WSL and they defeated the Foxes that is London that is if I say London that is Leicester City um 4 nil. so they defeated Leicester City 4 nil. Um, right, so let's continue in the championship. If I can find my tab again, yes, I can. Let's do a little back step 
and get back onto that table. And now we're going to look up. And if you look up, you will see that we have a regular girl sitting pretty at the top of the table. Five games played, four matches won, one draw, zero losses. The only team that is currently unbeaten in the league um, at the moment is Bristol City. And that is the home of Shania Hales. So let's go ahead and see what happened in this game. So there you have it. As I re uh, as I stated earlier on in the live stream, two braces, right? Four goals apiece. One for um, two for Bunny and two for Shania Hales as well, right? Um, so let's go through this one there for you guys. Can we bring up the starting eleven so you guys can see? Um, who you're seeking to keep an eye on. If you want to go ahead and buy your Bristol City jersey, go ahead and get the number nine there for um, Shania Hale. So if we scroll up and um, look at the full-time results they played against Sheffield United, and this one was a exciting game exciting game because it simply means that they and when i say they i'm referring to bristol city remain at the top of the table and that is in the second tier of women's football in england so Sh Sh shania hills i should say bagged a brace as bristol city stayed top of the barclays women's championship with a 3-1 victory over sheffield united Are you guys saying anything there in the comment section no you're still quiet so i can continue i can go and look at another club for us if i turn on the um table there again rock our way through to through the um table guys probably the easiest way to go about it um not exactly the result we would have wanted not going to spend too much um time talking about Sutherland. Sounding a little bit salty here, aren't I? Of course I am. Um, but the player that matters to us right there, you can see, is Paige Bailey Gale. And I'll go ahead and give you a little bit more information there. You can see she came on in the six to seventh minute, right? By then they were already clearly you can see their one goal down and they conceded another in the 89th minute so what that meant is it's unfortunate um Paige Bailey Gale and Crystal Palace registered a 2-0 defeat over Sunderland and if we go back onto that table again and look at Birmingham City and I think it's doing that thing again guys all right there we go so um Birmingham City and Siobhan Wilson, um, they're taking on South Southampton in Monday night football. There's another reggae girl that's um, scheduled to play Monday night football. Their clubs are um, down for a Monday night football, and I'll get along. I'll get into that later on in the show. Um, in case you guys want to tune into some football tomorrow night, you can make yourselves available for Siobhan Wilson's Birmingham City. They'll be taking on. Southampton right so what we can do now let me take a quick little pause and see you guys there in the comment section you're still a little bit I hope you guys have been hitting that like button but let me check because sometimes you guys do me so dirty and I don't know why oh I, well I'm gonna have to take back my word I'm gonna have to take back my chat you're not doing me dirty tonight I don't know what's changed I realize when I stay away from the live stream for a certain period of time I don't need to ask you guys to hit the like button re re repeatedly you just do it so maybe that's the trick maybe I need to stay away for like three days at a time so that you guys can hit the like button when you see me but thank you thank you for hitting the like button and I got it wrong. I have, I jumped I jumped the gun with that one. I thought you guys were doing me dirty. Um, my apologies. All right. So let's go ahead and see if we can take a quick little trip to Scotland. And if we're going to Scotland, you should know we're going there to pay Kayla McCoy and Vianne Samson a quick little visit. Why not spread the love, people? All right. So let's go ahead and look at Rangers, right? Um, the Scottish Women's Premier League. Sitting pretty at the top is Kayla McCoy and Rangers. Have a look at this, guys. Seven matches played, seven games won. 
<laughs> zero losses, zero draws. They have a goal difference of 40, 21 points in the bag. To be fair, um, there are a couple of um, unbeaten sides uh, in the league as things stand there. You can read this one for yourself. If you don't want to read it, I'll read it for you. You can see Celtic. They're the closest team there to um, Rangers, as is Glasgow. Glasgow is another, Glasgow City, that's another close team to um, Rangers in terms of um, chasing them down in terms of rivalry the whole lot mind you Rangers did complete a uh, unbeaten season last campaign so last season's campaign they completed that one unbeaten um, historic moment for the club and their um, women's team and also um, it's a bit of a um Double celebration as well, because we can remember Steven Gerrard's um, Rangers also competed, a, um, completed, I should say, an unbeaten season. Only relevant because they did so with um, Kimar Roof as well. Relevant to us if you support reggae girls and reggae boys, right? So if we can go ahead and click on this one. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. So let me just tell you, it might not work. And if it don't work, I might have to head over to Twitter to see if I can find the results for you guys. Because sometimes the league, and this is what kind of irks me about following women's football. You know, with men's football, you can type in the team and the results just come up. With women's football, there's always a delay, especially like um, if you're looking at, I don't know, say... Scotland is definitely one of them, but adding to, to Scotland as well is, say, Hungary. If you're looking at top flight of women's football in Hungary, and you're looking at Google, and Google is telling you that the scoreline isn't available. But then you're thinking to yourself, the game was played like 10 hours ago. Why isn't the, the full-time result available? Why can't I see the, 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 the goal scorers? Just little things like that that kind of irk me a little bit. Um, so let's see. Well, you know, surprise, surprise, they've got the full time result. But here's something that they don't have is the um, scorer, don't have the scorer. So what we do, we just go ahead. You can clearly see that they defeated. And by they, I'm referring to Kayla McCoy and Rangers. They secured a one nil victory over Hibs there. So their unbeaten start to the league campaign continues. And long may it stay that way. I'm praying to God that Celtic and Glasgow I hope their unbeaten streak comes uh, relatively soon because I don't want them to go for a season where I'm unbeaten. So I hope that comes to an end quickly because um, we're not here to um, support Celtic or Glasgow. Not unless they go and get themselves a um, reggae girl, a bit like what Hearts did over the summer. And in case you don't know, Hearts is the club belonging to Vian Sampson. And you guys are going to be loving this result. You should be you should be able to see it already um, if your eyesight is better than mine. Um, but now you should definitely be able to read this one. You see what I mean, guys? They've got a the full-time result, but they don't have the goal scorer. So you're just going to have to trust me on this one. Um, Vian Sampson netted. Hearts' second goal as the Scottish side produced a 3-0 league victory over Aberdeen. Um, so, yeah, um, it does force you to dig a little bit deeper. Unless you're watching the game yourself and you're making notes as you go along, it does force you to dig a little bit deeper because they're just not even doing the basics. Like, how do you expect people to buy into women's football when you can't even give us the basics? Just give us the information like you would. And it's not all the leagues that does that because we already looked at um, top flight of women's football in England and you could clearly see the full-time results I don't usually have an issue with WWSL or the championship where women's football is concerned the results are usually right there at, at your fingertips but the rest of the leagues Scotland's driving me crazy at the moment they need to do better um, Hungary needs to do better as well I'm just going to call you guys out because you make it so difficult to buy into your product and you really have to love women's football to dig deep to find out these um, necessary information. And obviously, in my case, me digging deep and then giving you guys the information. Um, save you guys the time, save you guys the bother. But that is one of the reasons why sometimes I'm a little bit delayed with these live streams, because I would love it if um, my research could take 
say an hour, an hour to do the research and then to go back over it, just to double check. And more of more times, more times than any guys, more often than ever, I'm having to just dig deep for these results. I'm trying to go above, above and beyond just so I can um, give you guys accurate information. I really want to see Jamaica as world beaters, but that's better. That's better said than done. May I don't know. Maybe God answers prayers, so maybe we have to all pray together. Good day, Mr. Webster. How are you? Bless these young sisters passing through hot chili, getting Sunday girls fixed. Thanks. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Big up yourself, Mr. Webster. I see your boys got the free points there in the bag. How are you feeling? Title contenders. Let me know how you're feeling there, Mr. Webster. Mr. Walker, you haven't been around um, these part of towns for, for a while. How you doing? Happy Sunday to you. So happy Sunday to all of you there in the um in the comments section. All of the eligible Jamaican women. Would you add to the squad? <laughs> hmm. Let me think about that one before I close off on the show. Let me think about that one, Mr. Webster. Let me let me give some thought to that one. A few things that I want to consider. Do they even want to play for us? I don't really want to say I want someone to play for us if they have no intentions on playing for Jamaica. But if they're going to make a difference, then, yeah, I think I have someone in mind. Um. All right, let's head over. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're doing yeah following the gunners all right following the leaders okay there are worse ways to spend your day there mr webster there are worse ways right gunners boss how are you good day sir how you doing spurs tight to contenders never but let me keep quiet see <laughs> At least you have sense. Today's not the day for you to be piping up, actually. Wait a second. Today's not the day for you to be piping up. All right, guys. So let's scroll down and um, let's go through my list. My list is saying we've got to take a little trip over to Hungary. Pray for the male team. They need to emulate the women's team, Jamaica first. Can't argue with that, can you? Um, okay, where are we? All right, so let's go over to Hungary. And if you know about Hungary and top flight of women's football in Hungary, then you should know that we're about to pay Marla Sweatman and Tiffany Cameron a quick visit. It's actually on the right team. It's on Victoria. Victoria is the club belonging to Marla Sweatman. I'm going to have to give that one a little refresh. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to have to go back with this one for some odd reason. Um, and I'm going to have to try it again. Uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Um, as you can see, they kickstarted, and the team that we're that's relevant to us again, guys, is Victoria. You can see here if I click on it for you, um, they kickstarted things on Friday, so they kickstarted their weekend uh, a day early. Always good to get these fixtures, weekend fixtures, um, out the way. If you can play on a Friday, play on your Friday, pending that you don't have a midweek fixture because that would just be cruel. Um, but if you don't have a midweek fixture and it's available to play on a Friday, why not? A little bit of a Friday night football. Hopefully the results go your way. If it does, so be the case. It simply means you'll be having a stress-free weekend. I know you guys must know what a stressful weekend is when you take into consideration the clubs that you guys support, including me. I'm not taking myself out of that. Today was a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit of an uncomfortable game today, uh, but thankfully they got the job done. Right, back to Marlowe and Victoria. You can see there, again, they kick-started their weekend on Friday and they... Uh, produced a one-all draw against their opponent. And as things stand, <clears throat> eight matches played. They are currently sat there in ninth position. I'm hoping that they can springboard their way up into the top half of the table. Um, poor loss given how they have started off the league campaign. Eight matches played, one win. 
three defeats, four losses. So eight matches played, four losses, three draws, one win, right? And they're currently on six points as things stand. Now, if we take a quick little glance um, uh, to the top of the table, you can see sitting firmly in um, second place is Eto FC. Um, have they updated this one? You see what I mean, guys? You don't really have much of an information, much information to um work with. Good news here. Um, outside of the um result, that is, you can clearly see that it's a two-all draw. A little bit of an underwhelming game. Um, uh, if you support Tiffany Cameron and Echo FC, but on the flip side, um, you'd be pleased to know that. Cameron registered an assist as Eto settled for a two-all draw against Puskas, right? And they're currently sat in um, second place. Only team to beat them is the current leaders of the group, and that's the former club belonging to Tiffany Cameron. As you can see, things are quite a little bit, it's a bit tight at the top, isn't it? Um, Eto FC on 19 points, MTK also on 19 points. Goal difference for Tiffany Cameron is 26. Goal difference for MTK is 25. Oh my God, look at the, le the league leaders. Look, their goal difference is 75, guys. You hear that? Eight matches played and their goal difference is 75. I'm going to stop whilst I'm at it. I'm going to stop whilst I am at it. Let's see what you guys are saying in the comment section. I'm so happy for Liverpool win today. They just ease City off our back temporarily. I mean, the good thing about that is they can't do a season unbeaten, right? Ian Campbell, I think the Federation tried to things differently i see them trying but it's not jump the, let's not jump the gun and watch yeah they are trying the federation's definitely trying i, I mean give credit where credit's due they're trying but I'm, i can't say i'm best please let's not forget that we did miss out on a international break this international break on for october we didn't play no matches other serious countries um play their games we didn't play no um game all we could do is really just sit and watch what other, um, other countries are doing in terms of sharpening their tools and so on. All right, I'm about to make you guys. Um, let's go ahead and um, see if I can get up another result. I'm looking at 101 tabs here, guys. So sometimes it's a little bit confusing, but see if I can put a little smile on your faces, especially if you support Manchester City, that is probably feeling a little bit blue. Are you feeling a, that was not intended, but that was a beautiful line. Are you guys feeling a little bit blue? Um, I'll leave you guys alone temporarily, that is. And I'm only doing this because um hot chili, he pulled my leg some weeks ago um when we were set to play against Spurs. So Rochelle, please forgive me, but hot chili. I've been waiting on you, my friend. I've been waiting patiently on you. So this one is another pretty reading there um for the top division of women's football in the Czech Republic. Um, the team that matters to us is Slavia Prague. By the way, before it slips my memory, they are in the Champions League, right? So that is the club belonging to uh, um, Alika Keen. And they are at the exciting stage of the Champions League. Can do a little, quick little refresh. Let me do something quickly. All right, let's look at this. Right, so there they are. In case you want to watch some um, Champions League football, keep your eyes peeled for Elika Keen. As you can see, there they have a game coming up against Roma. Right, so make sure you keep your eyes on Elika Keen and support the rest of the um reggae girls equally the same. Right, so let's go back into this one. Um, Slavia Praha or Slavia Prague versus Sparta Praha. <laughs> That's a derby. That is a derby there. Two similar um, teams in terms of um, how their how how you pronounce their names, basically, um, Slavia Prague. And when we talk about goal difference, there's a healthy goal difference there for the league leaders. League leaders, thankfully, long may it continue. Um, or temporarily, and I, I say temporarily um, because anything can happen, but hopefully not. Um, 
hopefully they can ride this one out for the duration of the season. It's only six matches played. Um, they are currently unbeaten with their rivals there. Sparta Praha, they're also unbeaten as well. Five matches played, one draw. I mean, we've spoken about these guys every single week and it's always like so identical. The only thing that's changed really, guys, since we've um, broken down these two teams right here, you can see the goal difference works in favour of Slavia Prague. And again, that is the team belonging to Alika Keen, right? And um, Slavia, I should say, Lika Keen and Slavia Prague. Another team that's another league that's irking me at the moment. You can't see the goal scorers and whatever. And you also can't see when the goals were scored. So you're just going to have to trust me on this one. Um, or if you want further evidence, give me a little um, notification in the comments section and I'll bring it up for you. Um, but that being said, Ilika Keen and Slavia Prague came from two goals down uh, to secure a vital point against Derby rivals Sparta Praha. Right, and the top of the table clash ended two all with Keen and Slavia Prague sitting top of the table in top flight of women's football in the Czech Republic. Exciting game, this one here, guys. And I know you guys have been asking a all important question um, in terms of can we see Alika um, Keen getting a um something just flew at me, guys. Another recall to the national team, to the senior women's national team. Perhaps so. If if not at centre back, then maybe at DCM. She was played in the DCM um today. Um first full 90 in, in that particular um position there for her. So that's another option. Can you can you see Alika Keen one getting a recall to the national side? Is she if she gets a recall, is it going to be in the um center back position or can you see um our gaffer Lauren Donaldson um slotting Alika Keen in the DCM position? I know we're always talking about um players playing in that um particular part of the park. So I don't know, who knows? Maybe we can see Alika Keen um playing in a um DCM position. Let me know what you guys think of that. I definitely think she's worthy of a recall. Again, her team is currently, they're currently in the Champions League. But one of our uh, current rigger girls, they're playing Champions League football. So she's definitely worthy of keeping an eye on. I mean, Champions League football, you can't be overlooked, right? So if she is recalled, uh, will she be played in her natural position or with the gaffer tester out? He likes to put players in um, positions that's not their natural position. So who knows? Maybe that's giving them something to think about. Um, if anyone can get that message over to Mr. Lauren Donaldson, um, that will be very, uh, I'll be very appreciative if you guys can get that done. I can't. Um, so if you guys can go ahead and give Mr. Lauren Donaldson a little gentle nudge, whisper that into his ear that um, if you need a DCM, I think we can all agree that yes, we do um, in terms of getting that necessary squad depth. Here's another play that you can look at. One that's beneath your nose, right under your nose, um, Alika Keen, that is. Well, it was nice to see Mr. Donaldson get his contract. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but like I said to you guys um some weeks ago, that is a full-time smile, right? From Lauren Donaldson. There's no way he was smiling next to Mr. Ricketts like that. And I can get it up. Yeah, see it there? There's no way he was not going to get that job. Um you can see there, full smiles next to Mr. Ricketts. That's not a man that's been given a part-time job. That's a full-time role for him. And we'll see what happens after the World Cup. Will he stay on? Won't he stay on? I think it's probably a little bit too soon to be asking those questions. Um, but maybe early next year, maybe early next year, we'll be able to um answer the all-important question. But good luck to the, to the Don. Good luck to the gaffer. 
important stage of his career and let's just hope that he gets it right let's hope that he can take us out of the groups because that's what we want come out of the um group stage all important um picking of the group stage there just to remind you all takes place on the 22nd of october so just about five days time by now from five five day in five days time we'll already know who the reggae girls are set to play against at the world cup and i guess before i close off i can probably give you guys another gentle reminder let me know if you guys want that in terms of looking at those um, groups again, right? I've got time on my hands to give that to you guys before I close off. So we can look at the um, the groups, give you guys a little gentle reminder. Who's in our, um, not the groups, the pot, I should say. I keep getting myself um, confused. We can look at the pots, um, the group stages for this weekend so yeah if you guys want to look at the pot again then let me know before we um close off all right so we've done the um, czech republic let's see um sweden i don't think i've touched on sweden so let's go over to i'm watching my clock my time is coming up to almost 12 o'clock and i have an early start tomorrow so it simply means i need to speed it up um let's see sweden 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 it doesn't i don't appear to have a tab open for sweden so what i'm gonna have to do is just create one quickly and i believe if memory serves me well um this one is going to be another monday night football remember we already have a monday night football um scheduled for Birmingham city and siobhan wilson uh and also, yeah, I thought so. Another um, Monday Night Football in the bag there for you guys. So, yeah, two options there to work with. Um, Ike, that is the team belonging to Chinalu Asha. I don't want to have to do this, but we do have to scroll down. How many times have we looked at them um, kissing the bottom of the league table, top flight of women's football in, in um, Sweden? 22 matches played. The results reads for itself, doesn't it? Only eight points in the bag. And they are set to kick off at 6 p.m. tomorrow. That's 6 p.m. UK time. And the season's almost coming to an end, thank God. Hopefully, um, Chinelu Asha can find a different club. No disrespect to her current club. Fancy seeing her play in... Um, fancy seeing her playing in Spain. I think Spain would suit her very well. <laughs> listen he was toying with me he was toying with me mr webster yeah i've been keeping an eye on them i've been keeping an eye on them they've been they've been tearing things up long may it continue good day mr scott how are you how you doing? Good to have you in the comment section as comment section as per usual. Damn, I missed out on my dessert. Oh, I'm definitely having that before I go to my bed. Um, all right. So Mr. Scott is here. So perfect timing, right? Um, is that perfect timing, or is he telling me that I need to take a trip to Spain? I reckon he's telling me I need to take a trip to Spain. So, with that being said. Let's go ahead and do exactly that. And um, this one reads for itself, and I'm hoping, yeah, perfect. Um, club that's relevant to us here is Levante. Yes, you do have two teams of the similar names, but it's the club that has the mouse pointed at it. Um, on this case, on this occasion, should be the home team, right? Top flight of women's football in Spain. This is the club belonging to Trudy Carter. All important information. Yes, she did start. I know that's what you guys are concerned about. And she came off run about the forty something minute, if I'm not mistaken. So if we can find, yeah, forty six minutes. She came off in the forty six minute. And you can see here that her team pulled one back to rescue a point in a one-all draw, right? And um, what I need to do now is take a quick little trip to France. See if I can speed up these last two 
um, results here for you. Ooh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, it's not the club I was trying to bring up, although it is one of the teams that I was um that I planned on looking at. All right, so let's um <clears throat> so irritating because it's clicking on the club but it's not giving me the information um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna um i'm going to um backtrack okay so that didn't work why is it not working for me all right let's um copy that and let's go again technology can sometimes be so irritating guys all right let's give that another spin it's not really working. So let me go to another. Why is it doing that? Um, all right, let's click on another. Actually, let's click on their opponents. See if we can outsmart this thing. Okay. Uh, perfect. It worked. Okay, so GPSO IC92 IC. That's the club. Uh, or let's just click on it so you can see. You should be able to see their name. GPSO92 IC. That's the club they're belonging to. Then then Blackwood, and also they recently recruited Yasmin um, Jameson as well. So you got two regular girls playing for the same club there in France. Good reading, isn't it? Being their opponents. Um. On an away trip, away visit there, two goals to the good. Currently, the league table is not looking that great, so we're not going to focus too heavily on the league positioning for now, Um, that is. Um, what we're going to do also is scroll over to some top flight of women's football again Um, in France. I have no idea why this is doing this to me, but... um. Let's see if I can click on their opponent because for some reason the team I'm searching for is not giving me the information. So I have to try and outsmart technology sometime. Not the reading that we were expecting or not the reading that we would have wanted, I should say. But if I scroll down, you can see who you're searching for, which is obviously Chantel Swaby, um, formerly of Rangers. Um, that's in Scotland. So she last season was the club teammate to her compatriot, Kayla McCoy. As you can see there, um, her team fell to an unfortunate 2-1 defeat. And if we click on the tables, the heavyweights are in this table here, guys. Um, you can see league leaders, um, call them the queens of women's football, Leon. You can see um, PSG is also there as well. Starting rings, what does that, what do they mean to you guys? Do they mean anything? No, they definitely mean something to me in terms of location and the 2019 Women's World Cup. FC Flohi, that is the club there for um, Chantel Swaby. Bordeaux as well, big up Bordeaux, former club of Khadija Bunny Shaw. And that brings an end to the show for now. And I'm only rushing, guys, because I have an early start at work tomorrow. So I can't stay up late with you guys. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Mr. Scott, you keep telling me that you're going to be coming on the show and um, you don't come on the show. So I'm not holding my breath with you no more, sir. I'm just glad that you are in good health. Mr. Maxwell, thank you for phoning into the show last time round. If I had all the time in the world, I would have spent hours speaking with you. Um, you called in on the show to defend your beloved Arsenal and um yeah hats off to you hope you have a hope you've had a splendid weekend um a couple of my regulars are missing so i hope you're all in good health i hope you're all um healthy definitely hope you um, you're all healthy actually says pep about to call our tetter and tell him to drop some points soon this is sad and desperate for me <laughs> Wow. <laughs> like football, I would see in a movie. 
I see where you're going. I see where you're going with that. I see where you're going. But guys, the headline reads for itself. Reggae Girls Weekend of Action Review. Thank you to those of you who have hit the like button. Pick up yourself. I never had to rough up anyone tonight. Usually, guys, got me on my knees begging for likes, begging for you to hit the like button um, so that you can spread the... Um, spread the video in our community and outside of our community as well i'm usually having to beg you guys for that but yes um hope you guys have had a great weekend uh, the dreaded monday morning is almost upon us i'm about 20 minutes away from that let me set my alarm what time should i i need to wake up at my wake up time is 5.30, guys. That's the time I have to wake up for work. Um, do, do, do. All right. All right. You're definitely going to be seeing me um this week. I'm going to try and um, make some time for you guys uh, this week. And then obviously over the weekend, I'm looking at working on some new content for you guys. Uh, something bespoke, which I think you will enjoy. Um, and I know I'm going to enjoy putting it together for you guys. So I know you guys are going to um, be appreciative of it. So let me just go through, turn off this light that's in my eyes, just blinding me. Um, I think I've covered all the comments there in the comment section. So all that I need to do now is do some work on social media and call it a night. And again, don't forget, guys, that the all important. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Um, where is it gone? Where is it gone? Uh, I did say I would look at the pot with you guys, right? Let's see if we can go back and look at that pot together. Um, because some of you would have missed it earlier on at the start of the show. And um, yeah, so whilst we're looking at the pot, let me know who you guys fancy, which which team do you guys want to take on? Mr. Scott, you can't pick all the big teams, then most of them are in the same spot pot so we can go ahead and take a look at the pots there should be able to see it right in front of you let me go ahead and remove my banner right and let's go ahead and have a little bit of a read through i can't read this um on the screen so i'm gonna have to change to another tab because it is quite small in pot one you have the co-host there new zealand and australia current reigning World Cup champions, USA, Sweden, Queens of Europe, that is, England, um, followed by Germany, France, and Spain. We have the current Olympic gold medalist sitting in pot two, and that is Canada. We also have the Copa America Queens, uh, Brazil, and making up their group is Switzerland, Sorry, not Switzerland, Netherlands, Japan, Norway, Italy, China PR, Korea Republic. Big up Korea Republic because um, they treated our girls well. So love to see that. Pot three, the all important pot three. Um, and we, Jamaica, are based in pot three. And to complete that group there, to make up our group, we have Denmark. Switzerland, Republic of Ireland, Colum Colombia, Argentina, Vietnam, and Costa Rica. And part four, as you can see, uh, incomplete for the time being. We also have the intercontinental playoffs, and that's uh, scheduled to take place in February of next year, between the 17th and the 23rd. 
and best of luck to Haiti. So yeah, going back to pot four, you have Nigeria, Philippines, South Africa, Morocco, and Zambia. Right, so that's how the pots are looking. And the group draw there, the World Cup draw, uh, is scheduled to take place on the 22nd of October. So that's in five days time. Before I sign off, let me know who you guys fancy. Oh, okay. You're moving smart. You're moving smart. So Mr. Scott is saying that's two people. Mr. So Campbell said he wants Switzerland as well. Germany. You want Germany? Interesting. South Korea and Zambia. Interesting. Interesting selection, this. Interesting selection, that. Interesting selection. All right. All right, all right. Um, so it seems like, well, at least a few of you are saying you want one of the hosts, you want New Zealand. Did, um, did Ian say he wants New Zealand? I'm pretty sure he said New Zealand, right? Let me just double check. Did he say New Zealand? Yeah, he did say New Zealand. Yeah, the way it's um situated, you're not going to be seeing um England versus USA, are you? So yes, all the other teams, all the other pods around us. Ah all I can say is I'm excited. Um excited for this World Cup draw, guys feel like a little kid like Christmas is coming early um definitely buzzing to see who we'll be playing off against I did say um wouldn't mind um Morocco you know if why not bring on Morocco um since they think they can beat us why not no no better stage no bigger stage to beat Morocco on than at the um World Cup approaching definitely exciting times good day to yourself happy sunday happy sunday to you <laughs> lfc and arsenal <laughs> at least you're thinking of arsenal so i can't knock you right guys we're brought an end to the show and i do have to i just have to love you and leave you because i have an early start tomorrow i've even had my dessert so i'm gonna make sure i have that that's important and get myself together for bed and that was your Reggae Girls Weekend of Action Review. Um, Mr. Webster, how are you feeling about Taylor Hines? Is that somebody that you have your eyes on? Um, I don't want to get... I, I don't... Listen, I've been feeling... I've been feeling... Yeah, I've been feeling like this hot chilli. I've been feeling like this. Oh, my God, I've been feeling. The England, I can definitely agree with you on that. I've got a feeling. I hope it's not. Jesus. I do want to play them at some point. I do want to, for the culture, I do want to play them. Um, and I would have liked to play them in a in a friendly. That's not to say I want to shy away from them on the big stage, but would love to see. I've already seen the men's team play against England, so I would love to see the women's team do the same. Um, but yeah, I did. I did think about that today. I was like, what if it is England? What if you are um, set to square off against England? I have given that some thought. Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, but I know we will get England, Netherlands, Nigeria. <laughs> Actually, so we'll always get the word people. This are the second time um the reggae girls are got World Cup. Actually, so we'll always get the worst group. <laughs> Listen, the group last time round wasn't friendly, was it? We had Brazil and we had <laughs> Samba versus Reggae. That's how they dubbed it. We had Brazil, we had 
Australia and Italy. I'm still going to die in this hill and say that we could have been, we should have been in Italy. That result was just madness. Like we definitely should have been in Italy. But um, yeah, nerves got the better of us on all three occasions. It is what it is. Um, but hey, we go again. And hopefully by the grace of God, we'll come out of the group stage. So there's your pots. Go ahead and uh, take a screenshot, whatever. Let me move the remove the banner for you in case you want to go ahead and take a little screenshot. There is your groups. Um, not your groups, your pot. Why do I keep on saying groups? I need to remember um, pot. Don't worry, I'm going to get this um, corrected for um, the weekends. The upcoming weekends um live stream so there's your pots you can go ahead and take your um screenshots england love press in iron on kiki and jody will know what to do <laughs> listen oh a lot of people are not going to agree with me but that is a game that i want to see happen i want to see the look if we can't get it in the friendly why not it's the world cup you can't run away from the big countries like you you're there with the the big boys you can't run away from it you know it's the world cup it's the best of the best you know rubbing shoulders is the best in the world i'm not mad at that i would i would take it again for the culture for what it means um, for generations, past generations, the current generation, the next generation to come, that would be mouth-watering. I'm not saying no to that at all. Definitely not saying no to that. I mean, Jamaica in general. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know what you mean, I know. I'm, I'm, I am have to make fun of you now and again, you know, hot chili, because you're dealing with team aware. So I have to make fun of you now and again. All right, guys, so... Um, let me go ahead and close off on the live stream and well, I'm going to go and do some social media posts whilst I wait on my dessert and yes it is 7 minutes to 12am and I am going to have my dessert and you must not judge alright so I don't want no one saying at this time of the night or whatever, there's always room for dessert at any given hour. Before I forget my manners um, once more, happy Sunday to you all. If you're out and about, I hope that you make it home safe and sound. I've already given you your Brigger Girls Weekend of Action review straight after the return of the um, competitive football where the clubs are concerned. Again, it's unfortunate that we didn't see the girls play in the October window, but it is what it is. Um, we move. We do have a game coming up, two games coming up, I should say, um, for the November window. And if you want to find out about that game and who we'll be playing, scroll through the comments section and click on the link. Um, I've already done a video on that, so you can find out about our opponents. There is the link. And sit back and enjoy and if I don't see you during the week, I hope that you have a splendid week. And if I don't see you over the weekend, I hope that you have a great weekend. When it comes, take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. Good luck with the dreaded Monday morning. Um, I'll be soldiering through my Monday morning and you should too. And that's about that, guys. Thank you again for blessing me with a moment of your time. It's always a pleasure speaking with you and you know how it goes if you haven't hit the like button please do go ahead and hit the like button if you're new to the channel please do go ahead and hit the subscribe button the pots are right there in front of you and when i refer to the pot i'm referring to the fifa women's world cup taking place in australia and new zealand in 2023 the all important draw is all set for saturday enjoy the rest of your Sunday and if you're in the UK like myself let me go ahead and give you a early good morning have a smashing Monday and until next time take care I'm John Barnes and you're watching Tarawa TV with Crystal Davis